Good morning and welcome back to Coffee and Colorful Conversation. My mug is different today. It says, travel is my therapy. And that is very, <clears throat> very true. There is nothing like, <clears throat> excuse me, traveling. Hey, Debbie, great to see you. I've missed you. There's nothing better than stepping out of your comfort zone and your normal routine to show you a whole different side of what life can be like. Hi, Pam. Good morning. Um, you'll notice I have a different background today and my hair is a little fuzzy. It's very humid. Um, I am back in my former salon, Lux Color Lounge. I'm here for the week. And good morning, Stacy. How are you? Um, the reason that I'm here is because one of the colorists, the girl that I hired to replace me before I stepped away from the chair, uh, she's on vacation this week. So good morning, Sidra. Good morning, Kathy. How are you? Um, my automatic knee-jerk reaction as an owner of 30 years, I am a, I want to save everybody. I want to help everybody be their best selves. And even if it causes me stress and aggravation, I'll do things that make it best for everyone else. And that's the old Elaine. The new Elaine is like, you know what? That's life. She's on vacation. Everybody goes on vacation. So when I set this week up for me to come here, I was in my former state of fear and what if and all of the things that I lived my entire first 50 years carrying. Oh my gosh, when she goes on vacation, this is what happens, guys, what you don't realize in your book and in your salons and in your schedule. When a guest can't get in to see you this week, this week is Jess's vacation. So if they're coming to see Jess every four to five weeks for a root touch up, um, and a trim or just a root touch up and a blow dry. They're on that cycle Every single five weeks from this date that she's away She will have crickets in her book and most of you never even paid attention to that I've always paid attention to that and it drove me insane. I thought how can I prevent that from happening? What can I do to get ahead of that so that it doesn't happen? but if you don't have additional staff that can see those people and balance everything out. Like maybe have another staff member have a really kick butt week that does extra to keep those clients on that schedule. And then they see Jess every five weeks after that. Most people don't have extra staff. I mean, what I've seen every day on all the forums and what I've experienced and what my daughter now experiences, it's hard to find a qualified stylist, especially someone who specializes in color. So I said, you know what, Bryn, I'm not doing hair anymore. I'm in Florida. It's hot in Florida. I'm going to want to come home. Put me on the book for that week when Jess is away. And you guys know I talked from here last time when the other colorist was away. So two times I flew home to my former salon to spend the week to see the clients so that everybody stayed happy. And the reason I'm talking about it today is I'm noticing, you know, a theme. Like last time, I was like, oh, it's the first time I'm back. It's a little weird. People are kind of like, why is she here? I feel like the ghost of Lux Color Lounge. I feel like people look at me and are like, oh, you're here. And they don't know quite what to do with it because I've been gone since December. So clients will come in and they're like, oh my gosh, how are you? How's Florida? And it's the usual back and forth. And then I realize very quickly in seeing them that life as I knew it here in this salon, in this neighborhood, in the restaurants that I used to go to, like everything here is exactly as I left it. Nobody else changed anything. Everything for me changed. And what I talked about for you guys who just jumped on, my mug, I'm at my daughter's, my mug says travel is my therapy and it has my beautiful lip print on it. Traveling can do that to you as well. Even if you don't work in a salon or you don't have to worry about that, you know, frequency and all that stuff. If you work in a corporate job, my sister-in-law came in last night to have her hair done and she goes to the other colorist. She's adjusted to me being away and it's fine. She had an appointment with her and we were chatting and she's like, not herself. And I thought, she's really not herself. Like, I just don't, I can't put my finger on it. Something's different. She just got back from a phenomenal 10 or 11 day trip all throughout Italy. 
and had the time of her life. And she's like, I'm really having a hard time readjusting back to regular life. And this is what happens. You think that it's vacation-itis. Like I thought that the feelings that I was feeling all the time in the salon in the last, God, I would say four years, at least four years in the salon, I felt so like groundhog day routine. I'm on the hamster wheel, wake up, make the coffee, wear the salon friendly clothing that's dark and boring and you can get stains on it, not worry about it and wear the funky, ugly shoes that are good for my feet because I have to stand for, you know, 10, 12 hours a day. And I, up until December at 52 years old, well, 51 at the time I was standing for a minimum of 10 hours a day, not eating lunch, grabbing whatever I can put in my mouth in between a color processing. That was normal life and it felt normal. And when I had someone cancel and my day became a six hour or a seven hour day, I felt as though I had a half a day. I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? Should I go to Marshall's? Like, what am I gonna do with myself? Like, I was so conditioned to be that worker, 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 keep going, keep going, keep going. And I never felt the feelings in my body that I feel right now coming back to it after being away from it for seven months and coming back to it, I didn't book myself as heavily as I would have had I been still here doing what I do. I gave myself a little longer for each client. You know, I cut it off at like six people a day, these three days that I'm working and I'm like, well, first of all, I'm in the middle of menopause. So I'm so hot. When I'm working, I have the apron on and I'm like, I don't want to take the apron off because I'm going to get color all over me, but I am so hot. Like everybody else looks fine and the air conditioning is cranking in here. It's like 70 degrees in here. It's not hot and I'm doing their hair and I'm just like, I can feel the sweat dripping down my back. I can feel my feet hurting, my back hurting, my tennis elbow already is acting up from squeezing the tint bottle and you know doing everything with this arm and holding it up in the air and I'm like if I never made the change that I made back in December I would still be doing this every single day and how much can your body take like when I sit in a movie theater and my feet are in sitting position with my knees you know bent I stand up to leave a movie and I can barely stand up. Like my knees are so locked up and I have like arthritis and I have something called chrondomalacia patella where my knees are so worn down from standing for so long that my bone scrapes against my bone. It's awful. So I'm just thinking about like all that I gave to this industry in my business, in, in my, my like, cortisol levels of stress of being the boss of up to 20 people at one time and making sure everybody's busy and making sure every single bottle and, and tube of color is there when they need it and they have gloves and cotton and foils and lightener and the list goes on and on. I'm looking around right now. I'm in my beautiful, you guys can see my color bar through the mirror there. It's a beautiful, very well stocked color bar and I <clears throat> consider myself what the industry calls a cherry picker. I, as you know, if you follow me for any number of time, you know, I'm not affiliated with any manufacturer. So like when I go to do a level three client that wants highlights, which I'm going to have one later today, they want that JLo caramel. I'll use a matrix, um, eight AA on them for their highlights or an 11 a, or I don't even know the numbers anymore, but I'll use a matrix color on a Latino darker based color because I know that it comes up a really pretty caramel and that's my go-to for that. So I have like six tubes of that. And then I have, you know, I use a lot of shades EQ, so I'm fully stocked on that. Um, and I had that little bit of anxiety coming home of, are they going to have everything that I need because I'm a control freak and I always did the inventory <laughs> and I always every night after standing for 12 hours and seeing you know 10 clients <clears throat> I would still stay for like up to an hour at the end of the night and literally do a walkthrough of the salon are there clean rolled hand towels in the ladies room for the next day are there clean robes for the clients are there clean towels is the foil torn and ready for the first highlight of the day? Do I have all my combs, brushes? Does everything work? The timers, are the iPads charged? We keep our, a question that comes up a lot on the forums is, where do you store your clients' formulas? 
We have simple iPads and we use the contact in the iPad, just how you would on your personal iPad to hold your mom's phone number, your address, all that. We use the contacts and then it's connected through the cloud. Our salon software is cloud-based. So all the formulas are on the mainframe computer of the salon. They're on two iPads. And if I wanted them to be, they would be on my own phone. I did not want that on my own phone. That's just too much. But what's nice about that is it's backed up to the cloud. So God forbid we have a power outage, something happens, an iPad breaks, no worries. It's also in two other places and it's stored in the cloud server so we can re-up putting it onto there. So people are like stressing out about all these complicated apps and oh, use this and pay for this by the month. And I'm like, we just use the contacts and it works great. We put, you know, myself, I'm in there, it'll say Elaine Travis. And in the notes of the contacts, it says, you know, one ounce of 7NB, one ounce of 7N, 35 minutes, room temperature, boom, formulas in there. So if somebody's out sick or like right now, just is on vacation, someone else can come in and do her clients, no problem, because it's right in the iPad and you don't have to worry about finding her formula. So on the subject of um, change and moving and formulas and all that good stuff, if, if you have that sick feeling in your stomach living your life right now, if there's something constantly nagging at you, I really do believe that God made us with a really strong sense of self and intuition and that space right here in your sternum, like under your boobs, before your stomach, like right in there, you feel so strongly in that area when something's not right. Did you ever like walk into a situation? At, like I was walking down the street in New York City. I was with my daughter. This was years ago. She was a lot younger. And we're walking, just doing our thing. It was a nice day. We're going to a theater show. And all of a sudden... I had that like ick, yuck, oh God, something's going to happen feeling in my gut. And I grabbed her hand and I said, we need to cross the street. And she's like, what do you mean? I was like, just, let's just cross the street. I just have like a really awful feeling that something's going to happen straight ahead of us right now. So we crossed the street and right where we would have been, a woman got punched in the face. Somebody grabbed her purse, like threw her on the ground. And I was like, Oh my God, I am some kind of witch. And it's not being a witch. It's being aware of the tools that God gave us. And so many people are living a life they no longer want to live. And all the signs are there. I used to say, I would go to a therapist and say, like, I feel bad. I'm successful. I'm making money. My salon is busy. Everyone that works there loves it. My clients love me. I love my clients. Why am I such a brat? Why do I feel so un, so unbelievably unhappy? Like, what the hell is wrong with me? So then I get a gratitude jar. My daughter made me a gratitude jar. And I'm like, maybe I just need to be more grateful. I need to take the time and be thankful for what I have. And maybe that's going to make me realize how good my life is. To the gratitude jar. And it did help a lot. It helped me keep a more positive attitude. But at the end of the year, I still was like, something needs to change. I don't know what it is, but something needs to change. So I would go to the therapist and I would dump all my crap in her lap. And she would say to me, you're not going to do this forever. You are soon going to not have a salon and you are going to, she's like, you love teaching. You light up when you talk about teaching. And I said, I know, but I love teaching, but then I don't want them to work for me. Like I want to give them the tools that they need to get up and running behind the chair. I love that. I love watching them light up and understanding color. And I love watching them do a complete before and after from start to finish. And I feel like a proud mom watching them like, oh my gosh, they get it. And that makes me so happy. What I don't love is I can't come in today. My car broke down. I have a flat tire. My son has an earache. My mother-in-law canceled on babysitting. They're scrambling. I have to call these clients and move them. I had enough of all that. So I thought initially when I had this like gut ick feeling, I was like, you know what? I just want to do hair. I don't want to own a salon anymore. I just want to do hair. So when I first moved to um, Florida, my intention was always to put more emphasis on the education, but because of fear, the, the word fear, I always remind myself, I tell myself that fear is false 
evidence appearing real because that's all it is. It's not real. Like we are afraid of what we think is going to happen. But nine times out of 10, that thing we thought was going to happen didn't even happen. And we spent all that time worrying and not enjoying the individual moment, worrying about what could happen and it never did. So my fear was I'm going to be in another state. I'm not going to know a single soul. I need to do hair, like hair is what I've always done. And I know that I can produce $100 an hour behind the chair. And most beginning attorneys don't make $100 an hour. I'm like, I got this. I'm gonna go and get myself a suite and get myself clients. I'm gonna make $100 an hour. And then in my spare time, I'm going to work on this education. And I had done this already. Remember, I've run my salon, I've done this a million times. But this was always my go-to knee-jerk safety net was doing hair. So I, if you follow me, you know, the suite was a disaster. I hated every minute of it. And I was like, wow, maybe I really don't want to just do hair. Like this is no longer enough. What the heck? But my spirit, my inner guide, my gut, my whatever you want to call it, intuition, gut, sense, God, wisdom, whatever the hell you want to call it. I knew that I had to like, in the online course world, they call it burning the boat. They're like, you have to, what is up with my hair? You have to like take away all of the safety net and really dive into the new. So I stopped doing the suite. I stopped looking for people's hair to do. And I dove in 100% into the online. And I've never been more happy or more fulfilled in doing what I'm doing. And now that I'm back here, this again, I told you I booked this week when I was still in fear of, oh my gosh, I'm not going to have enough. I'm not going to be able to pay my rent. I, I'm going to have to like keep the salon busy so that my daughter doesn't fail. Like I was so worried about everybody else. I'm like, if Jess is away and then she's slow every five weeks and what's going to happen to the business and all that stuff never happened. And it's not really making a difference me being here right now. But what I'm realizing by being here, I'm so glad that I came because I realized everybody's okay. Everybody who's gotten their hair done by the other girls is so fine. Their hair looks amazing. I've taught them well. It's time to pass the baton and let them do their thing. They didn't need me anymore. So as much as you like to tell yourself that, oh my gosh, you know, what's it like without me? What are they do? It's fine. So if you're feeling all the feels and you think, my husband's gonna be upset, my kids are gonna be upset, my mom's gonna be upset, yeah, they are gonna be upset for about a week. And then they go back to their regular life. You know, I went to the restaurant that I always go to here in the neighborhood. It's all the same faces. Everybody's doing the same thing. They're filling up the water with a little cucumber slice because it's Groundhog Day for them. And maybe they're not feeling the ick and the itch and they're perfectly happy with the routine. But when you make a big change in your life, you can see in other people how much they need that change and you can see their fear and you can laugh at their fear. You can look at their fear and be like, oh honey, if you had any idea how great the other side is, it's like this bridge and you're on this tropical vacation. Did you ever see those bridges in movies where it's like the slats of wood and when the person walks, it's like this and they're over a waterfall and it looks so terrifying, but they get to the other side of the bridge and it's the most spectacular waterfall and rainbow and scene they've ever seen in their life. But if they didn't get over the rickety bridge, they never would have seen it. That's the way that life is. So like if you're in the salon and you're doing updos and waxing, for me, it was, oh my God, a kid's cut. Are you kidding me? Like I would rather say no to the kid's cut and actually sit down and have lunch that day than try to cut a kid's hair and lose six digits off my finger bleeding all over the place because little Johnny has no attention span and he's freaking out. And then the mom's like, um, this is a little shorter on this side. I'm like, really? You thought that that was going to be even? Did you just see what your evil kid just did to me and during that haircut? You wanted that to be even? And I have blood running down my finger right now from your little Johnny. So we continue to allow the behaviors that we hate because we think we have no choice. You're just like, oh, that's what you do. Like a kid books, you cut his hair. No, you just take kids' cuts off the menu. We did that probably 17 years ago. When I opened this location, I said, you know what? No more kids. No more hairy taffies. No more running around the salon. No more pumping the freaking chairs up and down. And I still see it on forums where people are like, 
one girl said, you know, somebody had their, their child in here and he dropped my clippers on the floor and broke them. Should I ask her to pay for them? Clippers are like $200 and that kid broke the clippers. And then the client makes you feel bad that you expect them to pay for those clippers because they're like, well, it was an accident. Well, why was he touching your shit? Why is he even in the salon? So I was just like, there's no reason for it. There's plenty of other services that you can do. And there's plenty of those kids cut, ride the horsey with the iPad. Like there's businesses that make their business kids cuts. Let them do that. There's businesses that specialize in bridal. The girl that I shared um, the suite with in St. Pete loves doing brides. So coordinate with someone that you know loves doing the things that you hate. If there's someone in the salon that loves kids and you just don't want to feel like a creep, but you want to help them out. What is that noise? That's so weird. There was just random creepy music playing and there's no radio on. Oh my God, that's so weird. Sorry, sorry, I'm so distracted, but it's playing again. See, I'm talking about all this woo-woo and some ghost is coming at me with some music here. That's so weird. Yeah, I have no idea with that. I wonder if it's next door. We, we're in a twin building, so maybe I'm hearing next door. Anyway, um, collaborate with someone who specializes in the things that you hate. So now when, if someone reaches out to me and says, you know, I have a friend who's getting married in St. Pete. Do you want to do their hair? Hell no. I haven't done an updo since probably 2000 maybe was the last time. And it was awful because I'm awful at it. And I feel like I have to apologize to every bride that I ever did their hair because I was so bad at it. So do what you love and love what you do. And if you're feeling burned out as a stylist, as an owner, as a mom, as a friend, like whatever ick you're having, you're always going to have it because it's your gut telling you it's time for a change and make the change and make small changes at first. I found myself in this online education world now being like 24 seven on my computer and never giving myself a break because I have to push myself because it's just me. The whole company is me. I have no boss. I have no employees. It's just what I decide or not decide to do. And I'm always a driven type A responsible person. So I feel like I have to give 150%. A hundred percent is never enough. So anytime there's like nothing going on and I have no plans. I'll jump on the computer and I'll do a module or two or I'll interview somebody or I'll reach out to somebody um, or I'll go through old video and I'll do some editing. Like it's nonstop. So I was like, okay, Elaine, you're falling back into your old habits of doing too much. Take a chill pill. You have a nice course. It's set up. It's ready to go. Like you just have to nurture your members that are already in your group, make sure you're present to them and stop feeling like you have to keep doing something new, doing something better. Even for these coffee chats this morning, I was saying to my daughter, I don't really know what I want to talk about today. And I was like, you know what, what I'm feeling right now is about change and how weird it is for me to be back here and how right the move was and how right the change was. So sometimes staying in your regular situation and never leaving, you'll never know how great things can be and you can always go back. Like if I went to Florida and I hated it, I'm back here now and it's like, oh, hey, hi, you're there. Like it's no big deal. You're not cutting off an appendage of your body. You're moving your location and you're making a change. And if you make a change and it sucks and you're like, oh God, that was so stupid, then either go back to where you were, which is never the right thing because you weren't happy to begin with, or do a new, new. Like if the first new thing doesn't work, do another new thing. But it's like, it goes back to, you know, the Wizard of Oz I talked about in one of my coffee chats and the, the Tao of Pooh. Like there's these books and these movies and these stories that are so old from the beginning of time, even the Bible, you know, there's like th stories that people tell you that you never correlated to your own life. And then all of a sudden you're in your fifties and you're like, Oh my gosh, that's what they were talking about? Like, that's what the Wizard of Oz was about? Because with the Wizard of Oz, Dorothy kept thinking she needed the Tin Man, she needed the Lion, she needed this, she needed that. 
They all felt like they needed Oz, and he's this little guy behind a curtain, and they all have what they needed the whole time. So we have what we need, and we know what we want to do. You know what you like and what you don't like. It's just like food in a restaurant. If someone says, let's go to dinner, and you go, I don't care where, we want it, where you go, but you really care, but you're just trying to be easy and go along with everyone, and you just go, and then you're like, I hate this restaurant. I hate this food. I hate everything, and you have a miserable time because you didn't speak up for what you wanted. So figure out what it is that you want and make small changes to make life better. And trust me, it only gets better. There's so many resources. The world has gotten so much smaller. I have students in the UK. I have two students from Australia in my course. Someone wrote to me yesterday and said, I got your email and I would love to take your classes, but I live in Maryland. So, oh, well, I guess I can't come. And I said, no. This is an online course. I have students in Australia and the UK. They are in a totally different time zone and they still make our group coaching calls. So if you want to make things happen and you really want to be, you know, change and make dif different moves in your life and be successful and live a different life, do it. There's nobody holding you back but you. So think about that. Spend your day today. Pay attention to the things that you hate doing and just stop doing them. It's that simple. And on that note, stop doing them for next to nothing and look at your prices and see where you are and give yourself a raise. Even if it's $3, when I hang up from here, go on your computer if you're in a suite and it's up to you or go up to your boss and say, I want to raise my price $3 today. And I'm not going to warn anybody or apologize. I'm just going to raise my prices. So have a great day. Make some change. Thanks always for watching. Enjoy your coffee. Enjoy your Wednesday. And I will see you all next Wednesday. Have a great day.